first things first, these are all of the plugins that I use. Not all of them are used in these presets, but just to be safe, I'm just gonna, you know, list all of them. Main plugins would be like Sapphire, BCC, Magic Bullet Looks. Those are like the main ones, but I'd recommend getting all of them because they are good plugins nonetheless. Okay, just wanted to say first, sorry, this video is very long, a lot longer than I expected it to be. Uh, I also had a lot of problems with my recording, like it lagging whenever I go to RAM preview, not quite sure why that was happening. And I was saying basically a lot. <laughs> And my pop filter on my microphone did not does not seem to be working like it should. So a lot of my P's are like not good sound, not good sound at all. So yeah, I just want to get that out of the way. Hello everyone, Terrell here. Uh, today I will be going through presets in my preset pack number four. Ack. This one will probably take a bit of explaining. Um, I'll probably put an example for this and maybe just go through it at the end because this is uh, quite questionable. exactly know what this is let's just say that was a mistake and ignore that one uh big six two this is a uh, if you know the original big six this is just that but it uh goes back in at the end so it scales out and then back in big oof stands for a uh, big out of focus camera lens blur that just you know, focuses in and out. So, like, very cool, like, subtle effect. Big Oof BLB is the same thing, but with BCC lens blur. Uh, a lot of times I find that the blur is a little too much. So what I'll do is I'll go through each keyframe and divide the value by two on each frame that has blur on it. Works most of the time. Uh, big spin, let me get a picture. Okay, big spin would be, say you have your clip, you duplicate it, mask out whichever part you would like. Of course, you'd want to do a pretty mask, but on the bottom layer, you put on big spin, and it does this. <laughs> I'll put uh, an example of where I've used this. Big spin optics, I guess, put that on the same layer that you have the big spin on, and um, not quite sure what's going on there, but I don't know, an optional thing if you want optics compensation on it. Just kind of gives it a different kind of feel to it. Big VHS, this you would want on an adjustment layer. You get an adjustment layer, put big VHS on, and line it up in the middle, and you get a little vhs -y transition. BLB 10F stands for BCC Lens Blur 10 frames. Basically, you'd want the first two at the beginning of the clip and the last two at the end of the clip, but basically it just it's blurred at the beginning, not blurred, and then it blurs out, and you'd have something else here, possibly with the same effect on it. Uh, Boss CC is a color correction. It's uh, quite sharp. I'll show you the edit that I use this on. Uh, 
Uh, build. This is a pretty cool one. Basically, it's a twitch transform and curves to transition. It will do that. Uh, I'd recommend going into the twitch settings and uh, playing around with the seed because it's very it's a very picky plugin that does whatever it wants really. So just mess around with the seed until you get something that looks decent. And usually what I will do for the next clip would duplicate the, the adjustment layer and just flip the keyframes around like that. And then of course graph them the same way. Well, the same way but opposite to the first keyframes. And you get a nice kind of impacty transition. I will show examples for that as well. CC dye, that is another color correction. I use this one quite a lot, actually. This is probably one of my favorite color corrections I've ever made. Chill flicker, just flicker. Changes colors and flickers about. Confet. This is a preset using particular that I use when I make confetti. Uh, let me go through how to make that really quickly. Basically, you want a solid or anything, whatever throw the preset on there and at first it's not going to do anything because for the particles it's on textured polygon fill so what you want to do is make a solid just like something tiny really and mask out a kind of confetti shape that's actually terrible but hide that layer go oh my god I fucking closed it yeah, turn turn off the layer. Go into the particle settings, go to texture, and set it to that solid you just made. And you get nice confetti. I'll throw in an example for that too, I guess. Um, DSAT, this is quite simple. It uses Sapphire, QSAT Bright, and Magic Bullet looks to just kind of gradually desaturate. It has curves on it, so it's not just, you know, plain black and white. It looks pretty cool. DTNAFB Tint. That's a probably quite confusing name, but uh, uh, basically. I think I've said basically about 600 times. Get a nice film burn, whatever. Set it to your desired blend mode. And uh, throw that on there. Basically, it uses an expression to flicker the colors around with tint. And can look pretty good. I will throw an example of where I use that as well. Eyes. This is a, I think it's just a coloring thing. Yeah, it uses BCC Colorized Glow to make a colorized glow. Use this however you see fit. Maybe you have like text or, I don't know if it works on text, but a little picture of a heart or something. Just throw that on there and it'll make it pretty. Let's see if that works. Ah, uh, no, it did not work. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, if I can, I know I used this a long time ago, so if I can find where I use this, I will put in the example. Fairy Tint, this is a particular preset that uh, does that. Makes pretty little particles. Of course, you can go into the particular settings and move these around however you want. Uh, it's called tint because usually I would put tint on here to change the color of every particle, but 
I close it again. But yeah, you can go into the particular settings and change it as you wish. Uh, fat swipe. This should be on an adjustment layer, a one frame adjustment layer. Uh, basically, you throw that on there and it creates like a slidey effect, I guess, for just one frame though. I would recommend, you know, duplicating it, try and double it up and just play around with it really. You can get a pretty nice looking transition. I'll maybe throw some examples because that doesn't look too good. <laughs> I wanted to say that I really use that like everywhere <laughs> and I, I use it multiple times in almost all of my edits so it's kind of hard to just get a good example it's it's quite a subtle thing but it's it's very worth it in my opinion uh, fat swipe 2 is the same thing just a vertical version of it again same thing applies just mess around with it see what you get flicker this is uh, levels that just kind of flicker. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why I made this, why I didn't just use flicker. Maybe it had some specific reason, but uh, flicker 2 is not the same thing, but it's made the same way, except this one, it flickers brighter as this one gets darker. I don't know, maybe the usual flicker you use isn't isn't cutting it and you wanna <laughs> get some manual flicker in there g drag cc 2x grain i have some quite complicated names but i'd ignore the 2x grain part that was just like a personal note for me but basically this is just a color correction that uses an expression to uh how do i say this goes from black and white to color, black and white to color. I'll show you the uh, edit where I use that. Uh, glitch K1. Basically, if you're doing glitches, you want kind of each frame to be unique and individual. So this is just like a tint and curves that you could throw on one of them, one of those frames to make it look like a glitch of course you don't only want to have that on there you want other stuff as well same with glitch p1 just a different version of that and i think p2 is also also a different thing you could use yeah uh glitch r i really don't use this that much but when i would use it i you know have a solid I'd mask it out just kind of like that, whatever. Throw it on there and it kind of gives this texture to to this rectangle. You can change it however you want. There's another one of those weird things for when I do glitches. God CC with keys. Um, this is another color correction that has quite a bit of sharpen on it actually, but uh, the with keys part is just the glint. There's a keyframe for the brightness. Probably don't worry about that. Just change that however you want. But yeah, it's just a color correction. Grime W. This is a turbulent kind of effect. Can be add some uniqueness to your videos. I wouldn't recommend putting it on everything as it uses posterized time, which lowers the frame rate significantly. Okay, here. These are very confusing. Uh, GZ1 color 8 FR OP 0 dash <laughs> 1. Um, basically, I want to say, I guess GZ was whatever I named the preset. Uh, color would mean after you put it on an adjustment layer, you want to set the blending mode to color. Uh, 8 frames, 8 FR would be 8 frames, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
and then OP zero to one would mean opacity at zero and then on the last frame put it to a hundred and the second part of that would be kind of the same thing I guess you can just throw that on there and take it off of color just set it to normal and it does a thing like that I made this a really long time ago so I'll, th I'll th show an example of where I use that surely you could come up with something nice with that sorry it is it is very confusing heart this is a fill in a ramp to kind of get a nice gradient pinkish gradient for a, a heart oh I use it on a heart you could do it on, with anything really but yeah just gives it a nice gradient uh, in out this um, basically sorry I, I keep saying basically I need to stop stop uh, if you have like a logo or something and you want it to kind of go away you can throw this preset on there I recommend using it with uh, the motion blur but basically like but yeah I'll show examples of where I've used that, where I have used that as well. Ink? Nani. Okay, ink. Um, pretty sure I made this for an ink overlay. Yeah, just kind of, it keys it out and as a tint you can change around. I don't know about the blur though, that's kind of questionable, but yeah, I probably made that just when I was playing around with the ink overlay. KCT. Gonna be honest, don't know what that is. Yeah, I do. Uh, you want to use this on an adjustment layer as kind of a transition between two clips, like so. It might be a little too bright. But I think when I made this, it was like a very dark scene. I'll show you where I use this. Kizu FL1. This, I believe, is a flicker. Yep. Just, I think it might even be the same flicker as the previous preset, but not too sure. Uh, Kizu FL2 would be... Is this the particles? Yes, Kizu FL2 is the particles. Uh, when I made this, these were all part of like one effect. And then Kizu FL3 is, I believe, a flare that you can't really see because there's nothing there. But yeah, it makes a flare. I'll show you like. Yeah, I'll show how I use these all together. Uh, Kizu Purple is a color correction, a very purple color correction. Can fit some moods quite well. Yeah, just purple color correction. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Kizu Slow, this is kind of I really don't know how to explain this one it's just kind of like a surreal look for this one it was made uh, long <laughs> it's made in a wide composition so your motion tile you will want to correct that to whatever the center of your composition is be sure to do that. I also forgot to mention that you will also want to change the center of your blur motion and your zoom blur to like wherever you want the effect to be focused on. 
yeah, I'll throw some examples of where I use that. Uh, Cobra Curves, kind of a color correction, kind of just like a coloring effect. Uh, what you want to do is put that on an adjustment layer, change the blending mode to color, or saturation, really just play around with it. Just gives a kind of different, different look to it. Uh, MBL Machine Broke, this is a Magic Bullet Looks preset. Uses exposure, curves, saturation, and grain. It's very simple looking color correction. MS3. MS3 is a kind of position impact type thing. I'd recommend also using this with After Effects Motion Blur. Uses transform to kind of like an impact type thing. And with this, you can stretch out the keyframes how you want to give it like a different different length or just make it look different however fits whatever you're making ms4 is kind of a zoom in again recommend using with the motion blur it just kind of zooms in and rotates or tilts a bit a good way to use this is on the clip beforehand, you can just do like a harsh scale in. And it'll make a nice little transition. Slow it down a bit. And again with this as well, you can stretch these out and move them however you want to make different lengths or whatever. Quite flexible preset. Uh, MS5 is kind of a horizontal positioning transition. Again, recommend using with motion blur. I use this quite a lot. Again, with this also, you can lengthen or shorten these however you want. What I like to do is from the preset from before the uh, fat swipe. This goes quite well with this. Get okay, cool sliding transition. I don't think I need to show any examples because I use this probably about every single one of my edits. So yeah. MS6 is that same thing except vertical. Again, recommend using with motion blur and you can again stretch these however you like. My shake five adjustment layer. This is a transition. Basically you want to line this up and just a shake transition. Looks quite subtle, but of course you can always increase the values however you like. Uh, my text, this one is for text layers. I will probably save this one for the end to explain how to do that. So if you want to learn about that, wait till the end. Mm, NCT shake, just a shake preset. Um, this is one of the ones where you kind of have to play with the seed a bit to get like a good movement for you. If it doesn't look good, just play around with the seed. And of course, you can change whatever values you would like. Uh, NCT Try. This I will put on my film burns to kind of give it like a different different feel to them. Instead of just the normal like orange, orangey warm kind of thing, it'll make it pretty, pretty colors. Mm -hmm. uh, NCT Twitch. That is a transition on an adjustment layer. Line up the keyframes. Just a twitch transition again. If you want to mess around with the, the seed to get it to work for you. Uh, Optic R. This one is kind of tricky. 
what you want to do with this is kind of play around with the, the view center. So you want your first frame, you want the view center to be wherever, and then you want to keep it going until the last frame and move it somewhere else. It kind of, this looks good on anime clips. Not, not this one, but uh, I'll show examples. Uh, palette CC color correction. I recommend changing the opacity of your color correction layer to 50 for this one as it's quite strong. I like this color correction. It's quite pretty. Uh, PTSD. This is kind of like an intense, intense, shaky, flashy up and down. If you're making like a hardcore edit or something like that, putting this on will do it some good. RBB CC is a color correction for my RBB edits. Nothing much, just a color correction. Uh, RBB CC 2-1 top. This is the second RBB CC. Uh, one top, meaning you want this layer to be on top. And then you want to have a second layer on the bottom and put RBB CC22 bottom 50 opacity on. Uh, just want to make the second layer 50 opacity like it says. And it looks pretty, pretty cool. RBB time slice. This, this is one of those ones that just works whenever it wants to. Uses time slice, wide time, dissolve glow to kind of do something like that. Uh, Honestly, even if this does end up working, the render time, a lot of the times is not worth it for me. But whenever it does work, it can look quite cool. See, like, I, I really don't even know what it's doing. Like, it's not supposed to be doing that. So yeah, that one just works for me whenever it wants to. RVV, this is a kind of volumetrics Transition, I guess. I really, I really don't know what to call this. Um, doesn't look too good on these clips, but I will show you where I used it. S S S S S S. This one is a uh, quite tricky one. Is well. not really tricky, but uh, I'll go over at the end. How to use that. Sock CC. This is a, just another color correction. Triple tap. This one. I don't know. I saved this one thinking I'd actually use it. I mean, maybe I guess you could find some use out of it. But it's just like spamming blurs and stuff. I don't really know. TVKF. This is a the like default TV preset in After Effects, but I've added keyframes to turn off the effects. I don't know. TV TV dupe. Don't even ask me what this is because I think that one's a mistake. <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to be there. Uh, TV VHS, VHS transition, uh, and then TV Vort. This is also one of the ones that works when it wants to. Yeah, does not seem to be wanting to work right now. Uh, basically, I think all of these TV presets I would use as one. Uh, I'll show an example because it's been a while and I don't really remember how to use it. <laughs> but you're, you guys are geniuses. You can figure it out. Uh, Twice logo. Honestly, don't even worry about that. Uh, Twixer, whatever, don't worry about that either. I thought I deleted these, but apparently not. Uh, uni blur, uh, transition, blur transition. You want to have it at the beginning and the end of your clip, and it just kind of just a blur transition. Up, down. This one, I'd say this one's quite tricky. Um, uses transform to 
change the positionings recommend using it with blur but how I'd use this is I'd put it on and kind of scale in with it I, I couldn't really get this to work consistently for me honestly it takes a little bit of fiddling with but I'll show an example of where I use that Uh, here we go with the Vort shit again. This one actually seems to want to work. Uh, this one might go in an adjustment layer. I think it does. Adjustment layer. And line this up. This one also was made a long time ago, so don't have too much information on it. Seems a little buggy, but I, I'm i sure you can figure out how to make it work. Let's see, Vort 2 is probably continuation of that. Yeah, kind of a, has kind of a tilty motion to it. Actually doesn't look right. Yeah, okay, I guess with this you'd want to play with the seed to get like a good a good motion for the shake really not sure uh, vort 3 I'm not really sure but I mean it doesn't look bad <laughs> it really doesn't just it looks, looks like a subtle subtle twitch effect not bad okay so for these vort and vort 2 I guess vort 1 you basically want to sort of line up the keyframes and just cut it and then on the next part you want to put vort 2 and it does something <laughs> it sure does something if i can find an example i'll put it in but i doubt i can waif this is a. Uh, I know i i made this for a very specific edit that i wanted to just do this effect over and over again uh, with this one as well, you're going to want to center your motion tile so it's not mirrored or anything. But, uh, yeah, you could probably probably do some fun stuff with this. It's a decent little transition. Uh, warp 15 is if you know, you know, the, the classic warp. This is basically that just for 15 FPS so that the frames line up. You'd only want to use that if you're making a edit in 15 FPS. Wav Wavar? I don't know. It's this thing again. I really don't understand, understand how this keeps getting in my presets. This is a... Uh... Yeah, I, uh, I don't, I really don't know. Um, Yeet, for the color correction, looks pretty good. Yep. Uh, Ute CC is <laughs> another color correction. This, this edit that I use this in, the footage I think was very low quality, so... I had to use Magic Sharp to get it to look good. Doesn't really look good here, but I'll I'll show you the edit that I use that on. And last but not least, Zer CC, just another color correction. Quite old one to be honest. But yeah. Okay, it's like five hours later and I forgot to go over this ACC preset that does this thing. Honestly, I can't really be fucked explaining this. Uh, this is what the keyframe setup looks like. Uh, I have 
film burns, uh, film damage, posterized time on 15 frames, more curves and curves and yeah, I it doesn't it shouldn't be that hard, right? Right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, now to explain the my text preset. Okay, let's say you have some text. Let's see, uh hello. Just center it real quick. Okay. So what I would do is I have a script called decompose text. I would use that to approximate position without expressions it throws text everywhere what I do is turn on the original layer and individually line up all of the characters to where they're supposed to be like so okay after you got everything lined up I would go through and center the anchor point on each character and if you throw on my text also recommend using with the motion blur it just kind of you can use it to animate each character in its own in its own on its own you can animate each thing on its own by doing this. <laughs> I'm very bad at explaining, but I will show a few examples of where I have used this. Okay, now for the SSSSSS preset. If you remember the fat swipe preset, I'll show you this. You probably can't really notice it to be honest, but uh, basically I take the SS, SS whatever, and apply it to my clip. And all it really does is, as you can see, it slides it to the side a bit. But using that with the fat swipe also combined with probably ms5 i probably have here yeah if you just use those three all together you can make like this cool fast paced little section i don't know i enjoy it and yeah just play around with that that this and that play around with all this stuff have fun make something awesome uh so yeah that's that should be it uh thanks for watching if you have any questions about anything at all feel free shoot me a message email me twitter leave a comment anything i'll read everything and respond but yeah Thanks for watching. Thanks for buying if you do. I appreciate it a lot. Goodbye.